So in the last episode, I returned to LA to continue work on the Mercedes 190 SL. You saw me break the back of that braking system. I fitted new cylinders all round and then moved up top into the engine bay. We acquired a huge array of new parts, but first of all, everything had to be removed and the bulkhead painted before any new ancillaries can be fitted. So we pick it up at the site of sheer devastation. And as always, let's get stuck in. So over the next 20 minutes, you'll see the results for all my pain and hard work and finally see this car take shape and come back together. Now there's lots of little fiddly bits that'll take a bit of time, but as the saying goes, the devil's in the detail. There's the old. And here's the new. You know, when all the dirt and filth is out the way, this is probably one of the most pleasurable parts of any restoration. And using the old one as a guide, I carefully wire up the new fuse box. And this old twisted piece of metal that's being crushed up is actually a carrier for the windscreen washer bottle, obviously been lost over the years. So with the new one sourced, it starts to take shape. And a quick clean and tidy up of the bonnet. Now I feel like I'm getting somewhere.
Now, believe it or not, these are the two main coolant distribution pipes, which over the years become rusted up and finally perish. Remember those botched up dirty old rubber hoses? Well, this is what should have been there. So these are the two main coolant pipes that distribute the coolant. So it's from the radiator, through the engine, out to the heater system, across the bulkhead to the heater system the other side, and back into the radiator. And so it carries on. At least we know this way. The system's working exactly as it should, cooling the engine and working the heater system. Okay, so just it's a little bit of a problem here. Uh, basically, the brake line was swinging through the body, which is dangerous because it ends up rubbing against the metal and then you get a leak in your brakes and then, you know, you know what happens after that. So this basically goes from the brake cylinder through the body, you've got a heavy washer, then you have this clip, which is missing from down here, which is basically not holding it tight and that's why it's swinging about everywhere. And this goes on here like that. So it tightens onto the body, you get your brake line through there, so that washer is in between the body, and that clips onto there like that. And this, in effect, holds it tight against the body. But this was missing, that's why it was swinging. Uh, so yeah, I managed to get this from the Classic Centre, which was good, because I couldn't get it from anywhere else, and they had it, which was uh, a spot of luck. And it's like spring steel, so when that tightens, it holds it firm to the body. You know. Simple little things, but if you don't replace these or you just don't make sure they're there, then you hit problems down the line and brakes are dangerous, they've got to be done properly. So with that one done, over to the other side. Now this one isn't as straightforward as you can see. Even though this one still has its clip, I've literally got to move everything out the way before I can get to it. Now with that done, we then move underneath for the master cylinder. The final component of the braking system, which operated by the foot pedal and assisted by the brake booster, pushes the fluid around the system under pressure. There she is. Remove these two bolts. And in with the new one.
Okay, so I'm really excited here. I've just received the package from the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center. Um, I ordered like a set of wheel trims, original wheel trims, because I purchased a set of copies for this and I don't think they look quite right because you can see the rim of the wheel just on the edge of the chrome, which, which isn't right. They come further over the chrome on these, the original ones, from what I can remember anyway. So let's have a look at them. They're exactly the same. Okay, so this is the original, supposedly. <laughs> and this is the copy. Just have a look at them. They're absolutely identical in every shape and form. And there's not even, let's not get them mixed up. There isn't even, as far as I can see, Mercedes-Benz stamp or a part number on them. I hate to say it, but I think these are copies. So Mercedes-Benz are putting their packaging on and charging an astronomical amount of money for them. And they're basically copies, cheap copies. So I'm, I'm not really confused, I'm really disappointed for them because I told them they'd make such a difference. And uh, these are going back. What a shame. I'm disappointed. Oh well. I could be mistaken. But for the time being, I'm just going to use the set we've already got. They look a bit better, don't they? Nice, clean white wall with the proper tyres that were meant for the car when it was new. Everything looks nice and original. Excellent. This is basically a breakdown of rubber and crap in the system. See? And that's what clogs your system up. And that's why your flexi hoses clog up, like arteries. So I'm going to reuse this, but I'm going to clean it all out first. But this valve is actually from the air side of the system. Remember the vacuum pipe that ran from the distributor and was drilled and put into this hose? Somebody had actually drilled a hole in this hose. And when they started the engine, it's pulled all the excess rubber down through the pipe and up into the valve which fits at the bottom of the booster under here in the footwell and in effect compromising the entire function of the system and eventually causing the demise of the brake booster itself. And this one refitted along with any other bits it need to reuse from the old booster and the system should work exactly as it should. Improvising here because there's no vice, fun and games. So, what I've done here, this was like a long spout, and because we've got a new brake servo unit or booster, when we're turning it underneath to get it in the bottom of the booster, it's hitting the body and all of the things so we can't get a purchase on it. Um, now, I could have put this on before I fitted the whole booster unit, but the problem was 
I couldn't get it through the rubber, it was a really tight rubber. So the only way to do it was to fit the rubber, fit the servo unit, then this goes through the rubber and screws in. Again, nothing's easy, fun and games. And I've also purchased a new set of rubber grommets for the bulkhead. I think there's 20 in all. Along with everything else, these will make a huge difference. And just one final drain hose, which fits under the brake booster unit to take any water that goes onto the bulkhead or any brake fluid that drips down. It just takes it cleanly out of the cabin. This was rotted, so anything that was draining through was driven straight into the footwell. So with the last bits and pieces connected up, I fill up the reservoir with dot three brake fluid and check around the system, making sure there's no leaks. The only thing left to do now is to purge the entire system of air, starting with the brake booster and working my way around each cylinder. Okay, so it looks like it's done. There's no air in the system now. There's no bubbles coming from anywhere. Um, it's pretty straightforward that. So you start at the right rear, then the left rear, then the right front, then the left front. And obviously we started the whole process off bleeding the servo unit first. Um, and the master cylinder doesn't need, even though it's got a little bleed nipper on it, the master cylinder doesn't need bleeding at all. That's basically what uh, powers the whole bleed, if you like. So uh, there we go. Back on. Through the level's good. And uh, we've got brakes. So as I'm flying back tonight, I'm looking forward to showing the car to Dan. But just at the 11th hour, oof. Now this is the high pressure oil pipe that goes from the oil filter through the bulkhead to the instrument cluster, showing you the oil pressure. This means the car won't be able to be started or it'll spray the whole garage with oil. And of course, in my haste and race against time, this is something I should have replaced earlier really. So a quick trip out and I managed to source a brand new one. But just as I'm fitting it, yep, you guessed it, it's the wrong part. Oh well, these things happen I suppose. But I'm not going to let that spoil our fun. So after pushing the car out, and a quick clean, I suddenly realise this could be the first time this car's seen daylight. In almost a quarter of a century. And although it looks great, you can see the car clearly isn't finished. With still a list as long as my arm to do, I'm already planning my next trip out to get this car finished once and for all. And when Dan finally turns up, he explains he's had a long day in the editing suite, working on the latest in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise starring Eddie Murphy, working for legendary Hollywood producer, Jerry Bruckheimer. He's about the biggest, you know, when you think of Top Gun and CSI and everything. He's, yeah. he's about the biggest King producer. Arthur. Yeah. So, how did what what made you get into Edison? I mean, what was? I thought I'd be a composer. Uh, I thought I'd be a music composer, and then uh, in order to do that, I had to find someone who let me put my music in a film. I took some film classes and said, "Oh, this is lovely. I think I'll I'll uh, learn more about this." And then I got the bug, and then of course I was going to be the next Kubrick. Yeah. I was well on the well, way. You need to die in you? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I did a bit of it at the beginning, but uh, really, really what always had me was editing. Well, editing was, is was just... Was it something that you accidentally got into because you were trying to get into the Only a little bit because I had, when I was doing music, I had been cutting tape loops. Very, you know, we're talking the 70s, mm. cutting, cutting loops and things like that. So I had already been editing music. And then when I started taking film courses in art school, I went to art school, uh, that, that part was natural for me, so I gravitated to it. But then I, you know, when I started my career, I was producing, directing, and editing. I even produced a movie myself at the age of 25. Yeah. But uh, 
it, it just always came down to where, 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 where am I happiest? And it, it turned out it was me, me versus the material that we have to try to figure out a way yeah. to make the puzzle all work together. You've made some fantastic films. And I must ask you, I've asked you how you got into films and editing. How did you get into cars? I don't, you know, have you got into any stories cars. about the car? Oh, okay. Well, right after I got it, I was so proud. I was, I had, oddly before I was a movie editor, I became a music video editor and I, happened to be the white boy from the suburbs who was the number one editor of, of West Coast rap music. And so, and that's its own odd story, but uh, without getting too deep into that, I was doing a video for Snoop Doggy Dog, uh -huh. and I drove it up and he comes out and looks at it and he looks at me and he says, oh, Dan got him a bitch catcher. <laughs> I know that's very uh, politically incorrect, but that's how the story goes, oh, and, it's, and it's like, I, I hope you're right. <laughs> well, come and have a look at your bitch collector anyway. This oh, is how far we've got anyway. Oh boy, look at that. It's out the wheels. Oh my lord, it looks great. It's nearly there, Dan. It's probably 90% there. Does it run? It runs, but there's an, there's an oil pipe which went bang yesterday. So I couldn't show you it running now. Well, we had it running last time, didn't we? So we know we did. We've, nice we've seen the engine run, but now it's starting to look like a car. Well, you've got your wheels on. All your brakes are brand new from front to back. They've all been bled. They're all perfect. Um, and next time I come back on phase four, mm. I'll balance your carbs and mm -hmm. get everything nice, running nice and smooth, and you can take it away then. It's amazing. I, it, it looks amazing. I saw the inside the other day. That looks amazing. If it was a human body, and it had a bunch of organs. How many organs have been replaced? Just about all of them, but I can't walk at the moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but when I get that pipe, it'll be fine. Oh man, it's fabulous. It's, it's great. I cannot wait to fulfill the promise to my new wife that we're gonna take our wedding photos in there. It'll be a few months late, but it'll be worth it. Yeah. You know what? These have never really been my bag, Dan, I'll be honest. But the more I work on it and the more I look at it, and especially with it being nice and clean now, you know, that's really grown on me, this car. I think it's one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Well, Faye Rogers would be very proud that this thing has been brought back, and in, and in so many ways, I think you've already made it better than even her original restoration. Yeah. Because, you know, you found all sorts of things that weren't yeah, quite up to spec. I've done quite a few little mistakes, but yeah it's cars you know that's what happens yeah so this thing is going to be great i'm going to be cruising down and i'm going <laughs> to catch me some pictures now now done thank you for watching this episode of classic obsession if you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe and see you all next time